So I'm going to call the informational hearing to order. I want to welcome everybody to the public informational hearing for the Morristown Special Town Meeting. Before we begin, I'll go over some brief general announcements. Um, and even before that, I think I'd like to take a moment, uh, uh, moment of silence. Um, Gloria Wing, a giant of the community, passed away at 93. And uh, she was somebody who even gave me a little advice when I was, uh, when I was getting involved. She's an absolutely wonderful, wonderful member of the community. Huge loss for us. Um, so if we could just take a moment of silence. Um, yes. So today um, we have uh, just uh, we're going to be talking or giving people an opportunity to get information about a number of items that are going to be on the ballot for the special town meeting, which is on Tuesday, November 5th at the Morristown Municipal Building. Uh, that coincides with the overall election. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on the 5th. All active registered voters were already mailed their ballots. Uh, today, to help us uh, answer questions, seated to my right are select board members, Chair Don McDowell, Vice Chair Chris Palermo, Town Manager Brent Raymond. Seated to my left are select board members, George Cormier and Laura Streets. The meeting is being live streamed, so anyone wishing to speak in person must come forward to the microphone in the center aisle. Participants on Zoom should click on the raise their hand button if they wish to speak and mute their microphone when not speaking. Online participants, please confirm that you can hear me by clicking on the raise your hand button now. Mr. Budlinger, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, all participants must state their full name before addressing the assembly. All questions and remarks must be addressed to the moderator, not to individuals in the room. Your speeches must be confined to the merits of the item. In person participants will be allowed to speak first. Then we will move to Zoom participants. All participants will be allowed to speak twice on a given item for a maximum duration of two minutes each time. After you've spoken once on a particular item, you will not be recognized a second time during discussion on that item until all other voters who wish to speak on the issue for the first time are given the opportunity to do so. So we'll start with the various articles that are on the ballot. A reminder, there's Article 1, and there are three questions underneath that, which you will individually vote on. So the in, uh, Article 1 reads, shall the voters approve and submit to the Vermont General Assembly for adoption the following municipal charter provisions, Section 1, corporate existence retained. That reads, the inhabitants of the town of Morristown within the corporate limits now established shall continue to be a municipal corporation by the name of the town of Morristown. You'll be able to answer that yes or no. Does anybody have any comments or questions about Article 1, Section 1? Article 1, Section 2 is general law application reads, except when changed or modified by this charter or by any lawful regulation or ordinance of the town of Morristown, all of the statutes of the state relating to municipalities shall apply to the town of Morristown. Any questions or comments about that particular provision, section two, article one? Article, or section three of article one, has two subsections. You will vote on those subsections in totality. Section, subsection A reads, the town manager shall be the chief executive officer 
and the head of the administrative branch of the town government and shall be responsible to the select board for the efficient administration of the municipal affairs of the town. Subsection B reads, the town manager shall have authority to hire, appoint, discipline, and remove all town employees subject to the provisions of personnel rules approved by the select board. The town manager may authorize the department head to hire, appoint, discipline, or remove an employee subject to the manager's discretion and supervision. Any questions or comments about subsection three? Okay. We'll now move on to article two. Article two reads, Shall the voters pursuant to 24 VSA 3254 levy a special assessment not to exceed $200,000 for the purpose of constructing stormwater improvements to benefit 64 parcels, 63 parcels having frontages on Foss Street, Jersey Court, Jersey Way, and Sterling Court, and one parcel with frontage on Cottage Street said 64 parcels being designated as the Jersey Heights Special Assessment District, with said special assessment being apportioned among these 64 parcels based on the impervious surface present on each parcel and the assessment being payable over a period not to exceed 20 years in semi-annual installments. There's a note here that says only the 64 parcels comprising the Jersey Heights Special Assessment District will be assessed for these costs. A complete list of the parcels to be assessed, identified by their respective street addresses, and the taxes proposed to be assessed to each parcel is available for review at the town clerk's office during normal business hours. Is there any discussion on Article 2? Yes. Yes, I, uh, Bob Mortry. Uh, I live on Randolph Road in Morrisville. Um, I just like, I've read certain things on front porch form, but I'm really as not as informed as I'd like to be concerning this whole thing. Uh, I understand that the town is going to pay the 34% percentage of this. Is that correct? That's correct. That's of the $200,000? We're going to pay 34% of this storm, the stormwater upgrade. Which it, is 200000 It could be up to 200000 Well, the $200,000 is what we might borrow. We don't think we're going to need to borrow anywhere near that okay. much. My, my second part of this is, was this something that was on the horizon for an extended period of time, or was this just sort of presented by the state, sort of just here it is, you got to do it. Um, in other words, I guess I'm asking, did the town and or the residents of the Jersey Heights area know prior to this being instituted by the state was there any warning or was this something that people should have known coming down the pike or is this not the case? This was something that was uncovered by our town manager within just days, if not a week or two of him coming on the, on the job and presented to us as a, you know, as a, as a board, that's something, something that we needed to take action on. Um, so, I'm sure that there was information out there, but it wasn't, uh, it, and clearly it, it came on our radar screen right after the town manager was hired. I guess secondly, when people purchased property in the Jersey Heights area, there was obviously, they went through an Act 250 permitting process. The developer did, yes. Yes. Um, so in that Act 250, 250 permitting process, there must have been some indication that some stormwater upgrade might be necessary in the future. Is no. that the case or not? Okay. I think this is a, a situation where the legislature acted after the fact. So it wasn't part of the original Act 250 permit because that legislation didn't exist. The three, the, the legislation that 
were acting on didn't exist at that time. So then, as I understand it, the town and the residents of the Jersey Heights area had no previous understanding that this was coming, so to speak. The legislation was passed in 2015. Is that correct, Brent? Brent, Brent. Brent. speak to this. Do you want to speak to um, I'm not certain off the top of my head when the legislation was passed, but this has been something that ANR uh, has been out there about and and sending notice to very to approximately 700 permit holders throughout the state and um, a lot a lot of people have been delaying action and um, so when I came on board I was provided maybe a 10 minute briefing on it and you know said that ANR has not done anything about this you know it's not something that you know on the near horizon. I found out a couple of days later that the town, in assuming responsibility for the roads, with no HOA, uh, assumed responsibility for filing the permit, and that's something that I've, I've clarified more through time with the help of uh, some residents actually having me research this more. Um, the what I was concerned about when I found out about this was that the town was being offered a grant to fund approximately 73% of the estimated costs for this stormwater solution. And the deadline was approaching within weeks. So um, I, you know, I began communicating with the state the state did have liaisons that were supposed to be communi communicating with residents, but I don't know that that was um, being communicated effectively or you know widely. So I sent out a letter to all the residents of Jersey Heights, called a special select board meeting, and informed them the state A and I was present, and they they spoke about the three acre rule, informed them about what I knew. And it's been rap rapidly uh, evolving over time uh, as I negotiated with ANR and ANR to be able to secure those funds. So while nobody can predict your, your question about was this something that was rapidly approaching whether or not ANR would move forward with enforcement, the solution that 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 was filed and is pending on a permit with ANR was submitted three years ago uh, for specific to the three acre uh, stormwater issue. The state has been pending that for that number of years because they wanted an HOA also listed on the permit before they would f finalize their review of the stormwater solution. So in order to secure those funds, I had to act very quickly in informing the residents, trying to, to flesh out you know, what, what would be the fair and responsible way to move forward with this. Um, there has been, in everybody's deed, there is reference to the, all the permits and everything that needs to be complied with under that initial subdivision permit and everything ties back to that subdivision permit. So it, it, you know, if you're not an attorney and you're not going to delve into what exactly they're referencing, you would never even probably, probably notice it. Um, but it is in each homeowner's deeds. That's the same with when we, when the town accepted responsibility for the roads, which encompass 34% of the impervious surface, we also obtained a deed with that language in it. So um, the special assessment district is based upon when the town, the select board members assumed responsibility for the roads, there's also some of that stormwater responsibility, but not all of it, that they would naturally have to assume responsibility for it. And that's how this was all broken up. The 64% the is based upon aerial photos of the development, recent, and a civil engineer put that into a CAD system and calculated each lot, how much, what percentage they, they represented. Yeah, I read through that. And that was, that was kind of the crux of my question was, 
that when you purchase a parcel of land or a home, there is a, uh, your attorney is supposed to go through the deed and inform you of everything that's involved in that. And I just wonder with all the screaming and hollering about what's going on that it seems that either they knew that when they purchased or the attorney's uh, review of the deed <laughs> wasn't very complete. Um, and so I'm trying to, I'm trying to justify in my own mind how I want to vote. Um, and I've seen, you know, various, um, things one way or the other. And, and so you answered essentially, uh, the question that, that, that I had, and I, I thank you very much. And I think that what the town has proposed is a very fair reasonable way to go. I think you're assuming you're 34% of what the stormwater drainage or uh, emissions are and assuming that. And so that 34% would, if I understand that, is is by all residents of the town Yes. Is that if there will be a, a certain percentage of our tax bill that will will, will represent that thirty four percent, and the other what sixty whatever percent is going to be borne by the sixty three or four other homeowners? That's, am, am that's I correct. correct. Yeah. That? Okay. Yeah. And that and that is going to be paid out semi annually over a period of twenty years. No more than 20 years. No more than 20 years. Yes. So, Bob, I'm giving you a fair amount of latitude because yeah, I know you are. There. Thank you. I, 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 I just, re it's a complicated issue. And yeah. I'm no, just no, really I... trying to understand, you know, yeah. and, and be a smart voter. No, I understand. <laughs> but I don't want it, I don't want anybody to bring it back on me and say, you gave Bob all this time before. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, Evelyn Throne, Howard Street. Uh, my question is, uh, there has been talk, which, I, um, which I'm not particularly um, think is a wise way to go, but that maybe the whole, we, there should be some kind of path for the whole town to pay for this rather than the Jersey Heights residents. There's two concerns I have about that. Um, is there time for that process to happen if this gets turned down? Because I know that the grant only extends to it, it, it'll, it'll sunset in a certain period of time. Uh, the other question is, is that even legally possible for the town for the town government to say, well, now all taxpayers have to share in this cost for those 64 property owners. Um, it doesn't, it, that doesn't sound likely to me, but I'd like you to answer those two questions. If this, if this gets turned down, if people want to turn it down, what would the possible ramifications of it be? Well, if article two is turned down, if you don't mind me. Mm -hmm. If article yeah, two is uh, turned down, then the entire town will be 100% responsible. No, the grant is still there. Regardless, the grant is there no matter, no matter the outcome of Article 2 or Article 3, the grant is still there. So we are, we are going to get the $316,000. Um, but if Article 2 is turned down, then there wouldn't be a special tax ass assessment district and therefore the town would be burdened with the cost of the, uh, uh, the stormwater upgrades, the entire town. It would proceed, yeah, yeah. All right, any other questions? Yes. Uh, Jerry Throne, Marshall. So, uh, 
I'll address my question to you, Shap. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe regardless as to uh, how this vote uh, winds up, that uh, every taxpayer in this town uh, will be paying for a portion, which uh, is 34% of the cost of uh, the remaining work after the grant's deducted, as well as future maintenance costs, that everybody will be sharing in that. That's correct. Correct. Future in after this upgrade, yes. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go to Article 3. Shall the voters of the town of Morristown authorize borrowing an amount not to exceed $200,000 to be financed over a period not to exceed 20 years to pay for state required stormwater infrastructure improvements in the Jersey Heights Special Assessment District? Are there any questions about that? Okay, there being no further discussion, I'll adjourn the informational meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Shep. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you.